Bowen, so nice to see you. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm good. How are you? Good. Hot White Heist, back for season two on Audible Original. I love it so much. Judy Fink is back. Um, this is so cool. I mean, so many LGBTQ icons and legends like yourself, but... I mean, it's got to feel pretty good to be, I mean, listen, you're no stranger to a podcast, obviously, but this is so cool. <laughs> so cool. And I feel like we're kind of leading the charge in terms of Audible Originals getting like sequels and yeah. stories and expanding the world. And Adam Goldman is so, 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 so brilliant in terms of like just making it a big sort of tent for all these different people to come through. And yeah, I mean, the cast is crazy. Yeah, and Adam used to work at GLAAD, which is a fun fact. Back That's right, Africa. I remember. Yeah, it's so great. Um, and you have so many new people coming in. I mean, Trixie Mattel. Who else can we be excited to listen to in this crazy caper? Um, so many people. Evie Oddly, speaking of Drag Race. Raul Esparza playing a villain. I'm not going to reveal the identity of the villain, but he's a very good villain. And I, like, couldn't, when they told me it was Raul Esparza, I was like, oh my god, I get to... I get to like act alongside him in a vote in a, in a recording booth. Sir Ian McKellen, which incredible. is so crazy, in uh, incredible. Jesse James Keitel, Sarah Steele, Sara Ramirez, Joel Kim Booster, who is uh, some random guy I've never met. Some random, yeah. <laughs> some random, some rando. Uh, so many people, and then Tony Kushner's back for a little like drop in, like he did last season, which is still so surreal to me that he would even be involved. Um, so many people, but that, that's the thing. It's like Adam has created this thing that like allows every kind of queer person to just jump in and like dip their toe, have fun, and then just kind of like bow out. So I love great. that. Yeah, and like the thing is, so this season's gonna pick up a little bit, there's a little bit of a jump from where we left off, but why do you think that this story is so suited for this format, for Audible and original? Because it is, like I remember listening to the season one and I was like, it's just, it's all the things, you know? It's all the things. I think Adam is very good at like using all of the brushes in his, you know, set, uh, his, 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 his artist sort of palette. Oh gosh, I'm losing the metaphor, I'm losing the thread. But he just <laughs> knows how to like, he, he knows how to take advantage of the format in terms of like blowing it out in, this, in these fantastical high octane settings and environments that are really funny, which you think like wouldn't really suit an audio format, but like you kind of have free reign to do whatever you want as long as you, you know, just kind of have all the elements there. Joanna Fang, who's this like Emmy winning Foley artist, like did all our Foley again this season. She's amazing. One, one of the first trans Emmy winners ever um, worked on this. And she did such a great job of just like filling out this world and making you feel like you forget that you're listening to some to something just purely on one sensory level. Like everything feels olfactory and tactile and visual and, 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 and you're kind of just, you're able to do the dishes if you want. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> Multitasking. Multitasking. Um, you know, I spoke to Alan Cumming, who of course is the producer of this, so great. Yeah. And he told me that he is getting hit up left and right in his DMs about people wanting to be on the traders. I know you love the traders. I, do. I mean, have you hit him up? I mean, I think you would do so well on that. Thank you, thanks Anthony. I have I have not hit him up personally. I feel like I don't wanna, like I, I, like, I imagine he is, his phone is ringing off the hook, but I, <laughs> I, I have inquired about the shooting schedule for season three. Let's just say that. Hey. I'm curious. <laughs> and, and Alan um, said, you know, I think about the way that this, you know, this Audible original is so LGBTQ inclusive. He wants the next season of The Traders to be more LGBT people. So, I mean. If, if he has an all, if there's an all queer Traders season, that would, that would be amazing. Wouldn't you say it would be incredible? I mean, I'm I'm in. I mean, this show is is so suited for that. I think. I mean, although I do love a Real Housewife in there too. So you know. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, I I think they're included. I think they're an A. They're an ally. Yes, exactly. A housewife is always an ally. Also, you know that I was going to ask you, what was your take on all of the crazy drama that's coming out of the Housewives universe, right? I mean, you you've been you know very outspoken about your love for the Housewives, and now yes. it's what do you you want to say anything about that? I, well, I don't know too much about, I, I, I know about the Brandy Glanville stuff. Yeah. And, um, I, but I, I didn't read Leah's post and yeah. I wanted to have the, like to actually sit down and do it. I'm, I'm really behind. So this is, if I can confess, I'm really behind on all my TV. So I am one and a half episodes behind on Traders. 
Um, I'm behind on Drag Race, which is sinful. I'm behind on Housewives. But in terms of this whole <laughs> drama, like, I think, I think like we forget that this is people's jobs and yeah. this is like, this is their sort of livelihoods and they are sort of performing a version of the self for an audience, but also they have to square that with their real lives. And I think this is all sort of like, that's the tension of it. And I think we're, we're seeing how the fourth wall is breaking a little bit. And, um, you know, it's, I hope everyone, I just hope everyone ends up being okay. Like, and I hope yeah. like as an audience, we sort of give people space to like work, work these things out and not be too, not, not make our own assumptions about them. No, totally. And listen, reality TV is not for everyone. So, you know, right. But we yeah, love to watch it though when it's so good, you know, but um, I know. speaking of so good, I want to talk to you about SNL because you got to have some fun with Sydney Sweeney, which I, <laughs> yes. I was like living through you. I was like, ah. I couldn't get it. I wanted to, like, I loved it. Like, I mean. Oh, thanks, Anthony. What was that like? Cause I mean, it looked like a lot of fun. I bet, and I, I bet she um, was a lot of fun to do that with. She was so fun to do it with. She was so down and she was so game and she had such a sense of humor about herself. She was like, please let's do whatever sketches you guys want. I'm, there, there are no red lines at all for me. And I remember going down for one last check. And I mean, all week she was so down to like do that sketch of me being straight and us hooking up and all this stuff. But um, I wanted to do one last check in with her on Thursday. We shot the thing on Friday in one day. But Thursday afternoon, I go down to her dressing room just to do one last like pulse check and be like, we're getting an, an intimacy coordinator. It's all gonna be good. But just anything you're not comfortable with, you can definitely let me know or things change in the middle. And then she stops me and she puts her hand on my shoulder. And she goes, Bowen, I'm on euphoria. And I was <laughs> like, okay, okay. She was like, I, she was like, she, she's so, such a professional when it comes to like this really sensitive thing that she, I think handles with sensitivity, but I think she was so blunt with me in such a funny way where she was like, I got this. I know how to do this. I know more than, she was basically telling me, I know more than you. <laughs> I'm going to be the one to like hold your hand. And she kind of did. And it was amazing. Yeah. I learned so much from her in that little, in that little circumstance. It was very fun to watch. And listen, the two of you are both Glad Media Award uh, nominees this year because she is a producer for Anyone But You, which is nominated. And then of course, Las Culturitas nominated yeah. again. We love it. I mean, before I let you go, I mean, you know, we are talking about podcasts. I mean, you and Matt, obviously we love so much. How, I mean, are you still loving it as much as we, you know, do as listening to it? Absolutely. It's the thing that like has a completely linear sort of growth for me. Like it's it just the more time goes on, the more we'd love to do it. I mean, we have no plans on stopping. I mean, I think people got a little people got a little um, freaked out when Tina Fey came on and was just like, you guys, either you choose this path, either you guys are podcasters or you guys are movie stars. And we were like, oh, we're going to try to do both for as long as we can. But she was like, we can real do with it us. all. We can do it all. She, she can do it all. And so she, you know, she's the perfect model for it too. I think we're going to, I think, I think we love doing it. We're going to do it for as long as as we'd like, which is- You're um, gonna be a movie star, a podcaster, and also <laughs> a reality show contestant on The Traders now, right? And no, I'm just gonna- Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we can... uh, well, Bowen, it's so good to catch up with you. Um, just a reminder, mm -hmm. everyone, Hot White Heist, Audible Original, all episodes coming March 7th. We're super excited. Uh, it's such a fun journey, um, and it's always so much fun chatting with you, so thanks so much.